I'm Chris Hageseth, your host for Bird Dogs Forever, the podcast, and welcome back. Good to see you again. Now we're going to be way across the United States in Maine. And as you are going to see, the fall colors are remarkable. Very unusual dog, a Broc du Bourbonnet. You'll learn more about it. So come into the far northeast part of the United States and let's go hunting for ruffed grouse. Throughout recorded history, dogs have shared our lives and our work. For 10,000 years, dogs have been our companions. Our friends. More than mere tools, dogs have been our partners in work and play. Come join Dr. Christian Hagesen, his wife Laurel, and their Labrador retriever Jesse as they meet and hunt with a wide variety of bird hunting dogs and their masters in a place called Bird Dogs Forever. Look at the color. Fall in New England. It's about the only thing as pretty as a newborn puppy. Today we're with the Bolin Camp Outfitters. We are so far north in Maine, the paved roads are behind us. Our game, of course, then, is ruffed grouse. The ruffed grouse population doesn't fluctuate here. It's always good. We have a dog today that you've probably never seen, let alone even heard of. Try a Brock du Bourbonnet. It's a French pointing dog. Very few of them in the world, very few in the United States. Daniel LaRose comes from Connecticut. He's going to show us these wonderful dogs. Ken Konatzer is our guide here at Bowling Camp. He's going to show us the ruffed grouse. Let's get going. I can't imagine a more beautiful day. Our October trip up through New England presented us with the spectrum of falls artistry. Ranging from the earliest color change to the full expression of autumn's majesty by the time we arrived in northern Maine. At Bolin Camps, the maples were in their full glory. We quickly discovered that all those leaves, while beautiful, made seeing the rough grouse virtually impossible. Dan bagged the first bird suddenly, just as we arrived for our first hunt. And Parker makes the first retreat. Good boy, Parker. Good boy, come here. Give good dog, Parker. Good boy, Parker, yeah. Here's our first rough grouse. Let me just show you how to tell the difference between a male and a female. And the quickest, easiest way is to open up the tail feathers like so. The solid bar across the ends of the feathers, mm -hmm. like such, shows that it's a male. Okay. If it was broken right in the center, there would be an open spot right in the middle here. Feathers not existing there? No, there's feathers, but there's no black no, on the okay. ends. It's just an open space between the feathers. It would come across, broken spot, and then across the other side, and mm -hmm. that's the female. So the easiest way to tell right off the bat is open up the feathers, solid band, nice big male. Isn't that pretty? And this is the bird that does the drumming. I don't know if you've ever heard about sure, the drumming grouse. These are the birds that will be parading around on top of the lungs and they fill up this big wind sack on the front of his chest. You can see all these loose feathers up here. Mm -hmm. And beats his wings against the side of his chest in a very fast motion which makes that drumming sound. And you'll hear that throughout the woods mm -hmm. in the morning where they're ter laying claim to their territory. Interesting. Beautiful bird. Well, you've got yours. Let's see about me getting one. Mm -hmm. Very good. Kay. Let's go get them. Together with Ken Konatzer, Dan, Laurel, and I plan our hunt. Okay, Ken, what's our strategy? What we're going to do today is we're going to hunt these logging roads that are down here. Okay. And hunt the edges, because what we want the birds to do is catch the dogs with the birds close to the edge, mm -hmm. and then flush them in across the road so you get a good shot at them. That's nice. So that's a game plan, and we'll just walk along. So we're going to use two of the brocks. Yes. And then you and Laurel probably will come a little bit behind right, us. Right, we'll come yeah. a little behind. Okay, good. Well, let's go on ahead and do that then. I'm I good at right. being behind. 
Well, <laughs> me too. Let's get some birds. Okay, let's, let's do it. Let's go get them. All right. Okay, boys. The bells are primarily to know where the dog is when they get into thick cover, like the, what sides of these roads are. If they happen to get off into the thick stuff, you listen to the sound to the bell to keep a direction on where the dog actually is running. So if your bell stops, of course, then it's get ready because yeah. he's on point somewhere in the woods and that's where it becomes a little difficult to find the dog before the bird actually gets away from him. After more than an hour with no birds flushed, we take the bells off the dogs to see whether they're causing any problem. Dan cuts quite a figure, decked out in his tweeds, tie, breeks. He's a vintager enthusiast, meaning he loves old double barrel shotguns and classic English hunting dress. Another hour passes, and still no ruffed grouse makes its appearance. That blaze orange cap of yours? Yes. You know, we also wear blaze orange for safety. But with these leaves, it almost blends in. Doesn't it? Isn't that interesting? You, you have to look a lot closer. Yeah, yeah. And that's where knowing your target and yeah. what's behind it before you shoot. But, but they say there's no blaze orange in nature, but look around <laughs> us today. We're surrounded yeah. by it. and a lot of this cover gets laid over, these stalks will get bent down and will be resting on top of the snow. As the birds kind of run on top of the snow because they're light enough, this is one of their main winter food supplies, these seed pods. How interesting. And the brush on the top. With lunchtime approaching, Dan and Laurel take time to talk about his very rare bird hunting dogs. Isn't it unbelievably beautiful up here, Dan, in this Maine Northwoods country? This is gorgeous. I love this country. I look around and I just can't believe it. You have some interesting dogs, all seven of them. Brock du Bourbonnet. Very good. Yes, I can pronounce it. Not, not too many people can. <laughs> Tell us about the history of this dog. Well, they were actually had to be brought back. At one time, they thought they were almost extinct, and there was a big drive in France by a couple of handful of serious breeders to reestablish the Brock du Bourbonnet early in the 70s. Mm -hmm. and and how, how many breeding clubs are there now in the United States? In the United States, there's really only two serious breeders, myself and a gentleman, Lon Cook, in Idaho. So you do have puppies for sale, and you do the breeding yourself? Yes. On I see. An occasional basis. I don't do more than one litter a year. Mm -hmm. um, hopefully someday we, we get into a bigger operation. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about their color variations. They come in two colors, the liver color, which we saw running most of the day, mm -hmm. and the fawn color is what we call them. The French have a much more flowery term for it. La Vin de Maroon, which is a wine vin color, mm -hmm. and La Fleur de Pec, which is the peach blossom for the fawn color. Interesting to describe a dog's colors in peaches. Isn't it? That's it's, really something. The French have a very soft side to them. Yes, they do. Which shows in the natures of the dog. What about comparing them to other dog breeds, how do they hunt compared to, say, like an English pointer? This is a versatile continental hunting dog, which means it'll track fur and feather, point and retrieve, and their styles of hunting are a much closer working dog. They're not a big ranging dog that'll run out and slam on a point. Well, I have really enjoyed watching your dogs, the Brock du Bourbonnet, in action, and it's just been awesome having you. Thank you very much. Isn't it remarkable how much our blaze orange disappears into those fall colors? Gotta be really careful. Uh, wonderful day, wonderful time, wonderful place. Come back next week, we're gonna conclude this hunt. In the meantime, visit our website, birddogsforever.com, and I'm Chris Agaseth saying thank you. I really appreciate meeting with you.